be welcoming uh, President uh, Horacio Cartes uh, on his first uh, speech uh, as his first arrival as President of Paraguay to the United States. So we're very, very honored uh, that he has chosen Columbia University uh, as the place to uh, make his uh, opening, uh, opening remarks uh, as uh, Paraguay's new president. So can we thank him, first of all, for coming uh, today. <laughs> President uh, Cartes was elected uh, in April and took office in August. Uh, so he is at the start of a very exciting administration in a very exciting country. Uh, he himself is relatively new to politics uh, because he's a leading uh, businessman and an entrepreneur in Paraguay, uh, a very successful uh, businessman, especially in the food industry and in many, many ventures, and he entered uh, politics relatively recently on the theme of Paraguay having a tremendous potential uh, to realize its aspirations of economic development and ending poverty, and those are the topics that he is going to be addressing us here today. Uh, we've just had a chance to meet briefly before this. You're in for a real treat. The president is very dynamic and uh, very inspiring and uh, a, uh, obviously uh, a, a great leader of, of a country that is uh, determined to make tremendous progress. We are extremely pleased that we have a number of students from Paraguay at Columbia University. I think many are in the front row. Raise your hand, please. Uh, welcome. Uh, and uh, we're... In our uh, work with the uh, government of Paraguay during the past year, led by the Valle Columbia Center uh, at uh, Columbia Law School and the Earth Institute, uh, we had uh, help of uh, wonderful uh, uh, Paraguay students, uh, and we know the, the highest quality uh, that, that your country offers, so we're absolutely delighted. Without further ado, please uh, join me in welcoming uh, President Cartes. Please, thank you very much. Good morning and thank you very much. It's a real honor to be here. And I, I accept it on behalf of all the young people in our country. I really feel very moved seeing so many young people here. I know it's the health and the future of our country, and so many compatriots of mine who are here. In Paraguay, over 75% of the population is under 30 years of age. And I always use a phrase, I have three children. What I want for my three children, and I want the same for every young person in the world, the same wishes for my children, I want for all children and all young people in the world. I always said, if a country doesn't have a motivated youth um, who wants to advance, you know that young people can be old, but when young people aren't interested in anything, when they lose interest in everything, what happens for everything that happens in their country, what they can do for their country, then they be can become old even though they're young. I'd like to ask all of you here at this prestigious university, you have a very ardent and very motivated young people who are here, and that's very important in the world. I'm really, I was telling His Excellency Mr. Sachs, who was in Paraguay not long ago, 
I met him. He had been hired for a, a very important aluminum financial study project and for a treaty, an important treaty which we have with our neighboring country, Brazil. I'm going to talk a little bit about Paraguay, but as I said in the prior meeting that we had, I believe countries need to speak for themselves, by themselves. They always ask us to go around and talk about our countries, sell our countries. I don't think countries need to sell themselves. I think they need to just present themselves and show their attractive points. And I believe Paraguay is in a transition right now. And I'm taking advantage of the fact I asked Mr. Sachs, what did you think of Paraguay? He said it's a fantastic country. And there was a colleague, it's a little country, and I mentioned there to our colleague, it's bigger than Germany. And he laughed. Paraguay is very tiny when you compare us with the two neighbors we have, Argentina and Brazil. But we aren't little. I love Germany because of its discipline and work ethic. It has 84 million inhabitants. We just have 6.5 million inhabitants. We're a country which is, unfortunately, we have to talk about our strengths and our weaknesses. We have been immensely rich. We export richness and poverty. We export to Argentina, to the U.S., a little to Europe. And the main point of our administration is to fight against that poverty. I call it the devil's equation, 40% of poverty in a very rich country. Well, we have 90% of our land which are not even cultivable. We're talking about, as I spoke, said to Mr. Sachs before, when he visited Paraguay, we have everything that everybody, anybody could want. You know the only thing that we don't have? Financial resources. Aside from that, Paraguay has everything the world wants. What do we have? The best land, uh, fresh water. That we have some of the best, most highest quality fresh water in the universe. We have energy, which is uh, absolutely necessary, clean energy. We have Caracal, and we have two great dams, Taipu, and another one which borders with Argentina, and probably more which will be produced within Paraguay. What are we missing? Opportunity and resources. The word that I have and that you, are, you have studying at this wonderful university, how do you know? how it sounds to people outside who, when you say you study at Columbia University, a lot of people are very envious, take advantage of it, of where you're studying. And I want to speak especially to the young people. I want to talk to them about my country. I would like to speak like an older brother or father. I want to give you numbers, but that you can are understandable. I want to speak to you because it's a great honor to be in front of you, and it really motivates me. And I don't want to leave without telling you that the president of the public is, wants to achieve everything he wants. This wasn't what I had been dedicated to, but with young people dedicated, we can, can achieve this. There's no PowerPoint presentation. Okay, this morning I was with prestigious businessmen from the U.S. and all over the world, and I had to talk with them about our dimensions as a country, 
I don't know how to convert it over to American measurements in square miles. I don't know how many square miles. You have to divide by 1.6 or something. We have the energy that we have a very few inhabitants. We have a great opportunity for work. And Paraguay has been a forgotten country for a long time. In the, as far as the world considering us. And today, I think it's really impressive within the world's focus. Everybody is observing Paraguay as a country full of opportunity. And from our, the point of view of our administration, we should not let these tremendous opportunities presented to Paraguay pass us by accesses to credit, money, the possibility. I want you to know that in Paraguay, there, it's exactly in the center of South America. They call us the heart of America, but certainly a heart which isn't beating. The heart isn't beating yet. In, in very shortly, we're working silently, but with the best people in Paraguay. And I say this with a lot of pride. I'm really proud of, of the cabinet, um, and several of them are here with me today. It's the most honest cabinet that the Republic of Paraguay has had in a very long time. And we're working with the greatest honesty and transparency, which our country so much needs. And to add that there's so much enthusiasm in Paraguay that many people are working at, I don't know, without charging just not even one dollar. It, they're in the dark without anybody knowing about it, with the great desire that Paraguay can take this great step forward. There's uh, people in the country and outside are, are very hopeful. Young people like you talking out in abroad prefer to return to Paraguay, making me making less money, but following a new path which the country is going to now be able to have. We have a great government. I pray God that it will, he will give us all the wisdom for each decision and determination that we make that will be correct because we've lost a great deal of time. And today, I want to tell you a sentence which my father always said to me. For me, Everyone has the right to choose the country they like best in the world. I should be very honest with you. The country has, that they've always shown me as that example is the United States. But, but as a country of opportunities with a brother in an aviation school over here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, an aeronautical school here. My father was concerned that we were going to stay and live over here. He wanted us to study and then return. And he was half right. Uh, one of my brothers got married and he stayed here. He was wrong in the other half. I went back to Paraguay because I missed my country. I missed my country and I cried. I said a lot of times I was crying, missing my country, because even though a lot is missing there, even now, it's a country it, which is very difficult to describe. The most beautiful, loving, warm people in the world. And it, my father was worried. What are you going to do over here in the U.S.? Everything's already done. And Paraguay, everything has to be done still. And still, there is part of that situation. There's still a lot remaining to be done in Paraguay because, uh, unfortunately, as we said before, it's a country with so many opportunities, which I'm really telling you, I don't want to tell you to go and invest in Paraguay. I want you to monitor Paraguay. I want you to monitor my administration, see how we're doing in this fight against poverty, how we're doing with our infrastructure, how we're doing 
in opportunities for our young people. And I pray to God honestly that one day you will come and visit this country, which today we are announcing on the microphones, come to visit it because it's a country which sells itself. It's so attractive, and I know that it has all the attractive points that I'm telling you. I would like to tell you, what are we as a country as far as producing food and alimentation? Paraguay has very, very important numbers. We're in fourth place as in the world exporting soybeans. We produce corn, wheat, everything which the earth allows because it's a country. We don't have volcanoes. We don't have earthquakes, tsunamis, snow. Unfortunately, we can't ski, but we can produce things with our land all year round. Lots of time we we value our fresh water, and sometimes we misuse it. It's a country which has all the necessary countries to triple its agricultural production and its food production. In Paraguay, we had a record production in grains, our own record, and we can even increase that further. As a country and as far as attractions, we can produce what the world is requiring today, which is food stuffs and food products. We have clean energy and renewable, which is produced by the dams. The only thing that we are missing is the fight against poverty within all this wealth. I would want to invite you to follow up Paraguay, to know it, because it's a country that I believe that there's a lot more of what you have read and heard about it. The international organizations know about this. But I want that the heart of every young person <clears throat> so we had the best person in the world. Our, our, our Paraguayan guys and girls are the most loving and objective of the world. Thank you for everyone. And I'm here ready to answer any questions you may have. Uh, I would invite people to come up to the microphone. I'd like to ask uh, the students first uh, whether uh, one of them would uh, like to ask a question before I point to you to ask a question, uh, because this is a good opportunity for you uh, to uh, meet, meet the new president and ask a question of concern to your country. We also are very lucky to have uh, the cabinet leadership of the country with us also uh, in uh, foreign affairs, uh, finance, uh, and uh, other sectors. And Industry. Uh, commerce and industry, and so this is a, a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Uh, maybe I will start, but I'm uh, inviting people to come, uh, you guys first, uh, so uh, get your questions uh, together. Mr. President, what, uh, why do you think that Paraguay has been held back from development over uh, recent years? Now there's some progress starting why do you see this chance as being a good chance for a takeoff of the country? Soy un convencido que el potencial de Paraguay that the potential of Paraguay has always been there. I don't want to talk about what wasn't done yesterday, but being very proud of what we do. Without a question, what we need is transparency in public affairs and we are going to fulfill a commitment that we had in our campaign that everything that is public should be public and there is and there is no I don't have a, a, a doubt that in our fight against poverty and improve the quality of life of the 
a lot of money has been thrown around for them. It wasn't the best way to do it, but I am sure that even today, during a breakfast, we had 18% of extreme poverty, and they were asking us that we should have a target of reducing poverty 1% per year. And I was saying that we should have higher figures, not for a political challenge, but 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 the wealth that we have depends on the energy we apply to achieve it. Paraguay have made a commitment with the world in the in Millennium Pro, uh, Objectives that we will reduce the extreme poverty from that at that time was an 18.8 percent in the year 2000, and today we are 18 percent in 2013. We have two more years. I don't know that we are going to reduce it by 50 percent that we had committed in 2000, but we are going to apply our utmost energy to do this because the, the wealth is there. are the lessons there for uh, making a more general dynamic business community? What? We have talked to the, the young people, we have a quality of land that, that, it, that everybody envies. Most of the land of the country are, are apt to produce foods, food stuff. Some years ago, we had a few areas that were not appropriate, and because of the lack of technology, that was the, the, the low countries, they were flooded. But today, they are great producers of rice, which is in high demand. In those flooded, uh, in the low country, we are doing producing uh, soya beans and corn, and during the winter, wheat and uh, sunflowers and other things. So what we have today is a lot of land that is not being worked, and we have to we have to teach them how to prepare the land, uh, let them know what we think should be produced, and be and also from a commercial point of view, develop the markets. Remarkable and unusual circumstance because. Most of the world is struggling for how food supplies are going to go up. Where is the land? Uh, countries uh, in Asia with huge populations on tiny land. And the President was saying uh, earlier when we met that, uh, and uh, now explaining to a country the size, bigger than Germany, with a population that is less than a tenth, so a vast land area water, arable, climate, and something that we very much care about at the Earth Institute, which is that all of the electricity is clean, zero carbon. So this is also something quite remarkable because it is hydropower, and it's a largest hydropower project in the world. We've been working on Itaipu, as you know, Mr. President. Maybe you could uh, explain a little bit about the significance of the electricity sector, or how you see that in the future as helping the, the overall development. And then uh, I'm going to turn to the students and uh, ask for their questions. <laughs> in spite of our, of the extension of land and the quality of the lands and, and, the, and the climate, which provides the, this potential to produce uh, food stuff, the largest the, the, the largest dams in the world is Itaipu. Then we have also Karaj, and they have two, Itaipu with Brazil, and another one with Argentina. And we have to develop yet a small turbine that in Iyakua, so we may, we need the machinery, and we have to add three turbines to Yasirata, and there is a dam which is pending with Argentina in Corpus that has the same size as Yasirata. 
what do we want to do with that? That's the largest stock that we have. And we have to look at the country not as a, as a cash-generating engine, but, but the state has to be a tool to provide satisfaction and benefits to its people. What we are convinced is that, that what we have to do is transform that energy in the largest amount of, of, of employment positions in the country, because we are not finding that a lot of people is not finding these opportunities. A lot of companies are coming there because of the attractive of the electrical cost. We have an energy set that even us, the Paraguayans, don't, um, don't value it. And other countries, when they find out the cost, are surprised. And other countries don't even have that energy at that cost. So we should value more what we have. But especially the main direction that we have to this immense wealth that more than a Paraguayan success, more a God gift is clean energy that doesn't contaminate. Our obsession of our administration is to transform that energy in employment for our people. Dice, por favor, pónganse de pie y vengan a hablar al micrófono. Bien, preséntese a sí mismo. Yo soy Alison Parr, y ahora en el Centro Nacional de Arte de Cuatro Mundos, que está impulsando a eliminar la pobreza. También viví en Paraguay por dos años, entonces entiendo... Wait two years, I understand the beauty that you are describing, and this is so difficult to describe. I'm very much interested in the subject. But there have been lately a lot of, of inequality and distribution of, of the land. How do you propose to, to resolve This giving opportunities to everyone, especially for the young people, so that they have access. How do you propose to solve it? I believe. I believe what you have. I, I really thank you for what you have said. That it's a beautiful country. We have great people. It's a great commitment because there's an all depth of the different administrations, the delivery of land titles. I'm a landowner. I'm talking with my friends. I tell them that it's very important to provide a property title to land because for the self-satisfaction for the recipient. But the, just the title, and we are trying to deliver five or 6,000. We have, we have a disorder. They had disorder where the, the, where the property deeds are duplicated, and so we have to do a lot of research work and, and cleanup work. But what we want is we have an old debt with Paraguay. If it were a, perso a personal decision, I wouldn't even charge. But, but it's not that. But for so many years, we have not fulfilled our obligation with them, with the less. And I would, but, but, but also, not only that, there should be preparation of the soils, discussion, uh, agreement on the products to, or the produce to be produced, etc. Thank you. Bienvenido a la Universidad de Colombia. Es una buena pregunta. Gracias. 
I remember I clarified, let me first clarify that if I offended or bothered any, I ask your forgiveness once in ten times. But it's not words in a whole bunch of situations one says one thing and sometimes out in the press it comes out twisted or changed. I'd like to take advantage of the opportunity. They, I have three children. In the oldest is 29 studying. He'll be 29 on November 8th. He's studying in Miami. He, they asked, what would you do if they, your son came and said that you, he was going to come and marry someone with the same sex? And I said, I would die. I would like to take advantage of your question. I would say I'm a man who has his convictions, but I accept that each person lives as he or she wants. We all have our rights, and everybody has a right to his or her own decisions and freedom. ask you, you have, haven't spoken what you foresee in the future for the, your country and for the work perspectives and where you're working on the reincorporation, the complete reincorporation for Paraguayan medical sur. And is this necessary so that Paraguay can progress, considering that then Paraguay can some bilateral agreements with other countries, and Mercosur will serve to be able to help your country advance? First of all, during the breakfast, Maria, there, Enrique Iglesias was there, a personality who said that Every time that my countrymen speak about the fact that they want to leave Mercosur, I feel like dying. I'm going to give you an example. For personally, I understand when people make me graphs or with arrows, I understand more quickly. In the, the European Union, if it only had that power, if we if we go as a common market, we have more power as a region, and the conditions will be very different than if we negotiate individually as countries. Paraguay has always negotiated and asked and that there be respect for sovereignty for countries that that do not belong so that they, our constitution be not interpreted as applying to other people. A few days ago, the president of Argentina was in the country, and I spoke to her. I told Cristina Fernanda, I don't want to, my country to continue exporting poverty to Argentina. My people, my young people, I want them to have the opportunities that I had in our country. My second big dream. I would love that a lot of families, I know what a, the pain that a lot of separated families have to go through because they can't find opportunities within our own country. Yesterday I was with compatriots who live over here in New York, fellow countrymen, and I'm going to tell you a painful but true anecdote. In Spain, they would ask the same question to despite not having found the opportunity to work in our own country, they come over here to the U.S. and to Europe and especially Spain, and sometimes a person will pass away, and they can't even bring that poor defunct person, that body, back to their own country. Exporting poverty is very painful. And yesterday, we were t speaking with the president of our party, the Colorado Party, and he said, 
we need to take care of this and resolve it in our parliament and and ne negotiating as an individual is very different than negotiating as a block and secondly to specifically answer your question what i liked in my first appearance at a summit UNASUR in Suriname is that even though we may think differently we are we should all continue working and making the effort to do things as a region thank you good morning first I'd like to say thank you for coming today and speaking with us I'm Marisa I'm a student here at Columbia and before I, I lived two years in Paraguay, in, I was a volunteer. I lived in a very small town. I worked in the education sector. And you're speaking a lot about opportunities and about the young people. I would like to know what is necessary to improve and strengthen the education system. Marisa. 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 The nice news you worked for the Peace Corps? Yes. Uh, first of all, we have to have, a, we make the decision to speak well about Paraguay and talk about our weaknesses, and we're in have a big debt in our as far as our education system. I was speaking this morning about it. Probably education doesn't have the same cachet and the same amount of impulse for a government because governments come and go, but education systems last for a long time. We believe that if Paraguay lost a, and went backwards a lot, it was in the area of education. But we're committing ourselves to recover as much as God will allow us to. It, as long as people, it hurts. People go and do cleaning jobs. People work on in construction, building highways, manual labor. At the same time in Paraguay, a lot of young people are coming who are educated, and they're finding jobs in Paraguay. And that shows us that what we're missing is people with preparation, preparation with sufficient education. Now we're paying for what we forgot about yesterday. There are jobs in the private sector because there are a lot of opportunities there. At the same time, the people who most need it are leaving. People with more skills are coming to the country. If we, if we didn't understand before that education is the most important thing in a country, I'm convinced that a country's growth limitation is called its education system. That's where we're going to <coughs> start. I want to clarify you. We were elected April 21st. We have five years, and we, we have five years to work on this. So we're going to try to finish everything we can with projects, and then with projects which take a longer period of time, at least initiate them. Thank you for coming. My name is Shalom. We're very happy that you've come to our country. I know that you spoke a lot in your campaign about trying to improve the poverty systems. What are you trying, what programs do you have to try and achieve that goal to reduce the poverty rate? You were working in reviewing the Itapu numbers. I comment that, remember that I have mentioned that young Paraguayans like you who have very important jobs outside of Paraguay made the decision to return to Paraguay. One of them today is in the main place for the 
fight against poverty, which is the, the planification secretary, Jose Molinas, who's working in the World Bank. I met him, it's curious, in Washington. He was a young leader, and now, so that we can offer the, him to con come and work in Paraguay. Just one dove doesn't, one bird doesn't make spring. And I, we're never really, we're trying to put in practice having all the different ministries work together and support each other. It's very different if we can work between institutions with multidisciplinary teams and as president. I am extremely happy when I speak with the ministers and they, the education minister, public works, industry and commerce secretary, that we're complementing our work very well between the ministries and that's going to be a huge difference. In the case of Jose Molina's combating poverty, he's using a structure of ours in the private sector. I'm not saying in a happy way, but sadly, I know Paraguay, which has training and, and in instruction for people who are poor, technology, for example, we use GPS. As long as I see the administrations are not in the right place, people are being trained and in the correct places so that everybody can work jointly together so that we can achieve our goals. My name is Emil Valet. I'm 27 years old. I grew up in Paraguay. Mr. President, you mentioned that Paraguay is a country of opportunities. I'm asking what are the opportunities for us young investigators to go back to our country? And the second question, which, how important will it be for you and the priority of science and technology in Paraguay? I, I won the election, and I had great support from the country, and also outside of the, of the party. And we have a historical number in votes. We never got 900 vo votes in Canada, and we always got 1.5. And what was new, that in spite of having a party that has been attacked and was not well considered for many, I can tell you with a lot of pride that most of my um, cabinet came from there. And that makes me feel from the, that, that the, that from the letters I get from youth, some, sometimes they call me uncle or teal. So something. The difference is how you are appointed is not is not because you get a position, not because you are a friend or someone, but because of your own values. And we are doing in the technological field. We are telling them be ready because we are going there. My name is Andrea, I'm from Chile. I would like, I would like if you could explain me a little more in depth with what you mean by the production, the development of production development. So how are you going to achieve this? To have, to have full, um, full capacity for your own population. A great deficit that we have, not only in Paraguay. I'm going to tell you about Paraguay. And we are insisting in not intermission internal affairs. But we have a lot of underfed people, and it's very painful in our country. It's, it's terrible that we produce, that we are producing food stuff for 80, for 
food stuff sufficient for 80 to 90 million persons, and we have this level of malnutrition in the country. In October, we'll have in Panama a meeting where a pre an ex president from Chile told me, Carlos Lagos, she told me, she told me, since you are new, what are you going to present? And we're talking about uh, offering uh, projects that are feasible. Brazil is the first producer, Argentina is the third. Paraguay is four or five, four, four or fifth um, world producer of grains. And and we, I don't understand that we cannot have as one of your of your of, of your objectives is, is to is to end malnutrition and eliminate and eliminate the early infant mortality or early infant development because the lack of, of proper nutrition will affect their brains. But I'm sure that if we propose, if, if, if we if we if we set these this objectives, this is something that we can get because the the foodstuffs are there. And that will be my presentation in Panama, in the first uh, Pan American summit there. So we have a zero malnutrition population. Thank you, Mr. President. My question is based, is related with Itapu. And since this is good for the environment, but at the same time, but how your administration is proposing to, to keep the indigenous rights within an agenda, within this agenda. Sena. Okay. Which are we? <laughs> this is a mess. This is a difficult question. I will make. I would like to make. I made this public before I came here, that that there are asymmetries between countries or among countries. Our administration favors looking the best relationship with all the countries in the world, and especially with our neighbors, because we have to live with them. The persons may change, but the regions or countries don't change. And there are so many common interests. I'm very optimistic that both, both neighboring presidents called me. They came to Asuncion, when we were sworn in, we had bilateral meetings, and I prefer being very optimistic because of the number of other attractives derived from sitting together. And tell you, and tell you what I told both presidents: the the. The people of our countries will remember us better because we are just like a like a like a rain, like a very short period in the political life of our country. And I'm sure that our people are going to are going to are going to be happy with our understandings than for our differences. So so this effort that we have done there, we can go to move this to the field of dialogue and reflection in common, not only for Paraguay or only for another country. I'm, I understand that if we discuss and put on the table two reasons, we should be able to find better results in benefit of all of us. Thank you. Senior President, 
I think this was a, a great uh, demonstration of all of these uh, linkages. Uh, uh, your uh, students uh, from Paraguay, neighboring uh, countries, students who have worked in Paraguay, students who are interested in coming to do work in Paraguay and do research. And so I, let me take the occasion in thanking you to say how we hope and uh, will plan during your administration to build these connections uh, even more closely. And uh, we at Columbia University will forever be grateful that you have opened your trip to the United States uh, and your first trip as president uh, by coming here and honoring us with these remarks and bringing uh, your, your cabinet with you. Uh, and we look forward to many, many more occasions to, to welcome you here, Mr. President. Thank you very much to each one of you. And tell you, Mr. Sachs, that a few days ago, after many years in Paraguay, we made as Secretary of the Young People, Mr. Polanco is the minister. I don't want to leave the U.S. without bringing a good piece of news to my young people because the government is going to have an important participation. But I want the government also offered scholarships to the most prepared and trained people in there who can have the possibility of forming themselves, studying, in, in forming themselves in postgraduate studies in here in Colombia. They're going to ask me, you were there, Mr. President, what'd you bring back? I don't want to return with my hands empty. I promised my young people that I was going to make a big commitment to them, and especially in their preparation and formation. Thank you. Don't thank me. I'm the one who should give you thanks for allowing me to be here. Beloved young people, you motivate me a lot just with your energy. When I see young people with questions, interested, wanting to go forward, the world is saved. You're the engine, the health for the world. Use the experience always of those who know more, but you're going to be the force, the life force in the future. And I really appreciate this so much. And hopefully we have countrymen over here and we'll maintain our communication that this not be the only time that we maintain the relationships, that we can exchange ex relationships and we can exchange ideas and about our successes and our failures and our mistakes. Sometimes we learn the best or the most when we make a mistake. If we, um, at some point we make a mistake, you'll see that we will be asking people to forgive us and we'll rectify our errors. I would like to continue being available to you for anything you, know, you need, and thank you for this wonderful opportunity.